Please remain standing if you feel comfortable and join hands and we will sing Shirley the Presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Because we know that God is absolute, present everywhere. Good. God the good, the omnipresence. Let's just take that in for a moment. As we are here gathered, being in this holy moment, being in the presence of love, being in the presence of all that is good, Let's take that key word of presence as we focus our center of our heart space, being present with this moment, every moment, remembering that God is good. I am one with God. I am good. Let's take that in for the day and for the week and through our life. And so it is. Thank you. 
Hello. Here we go. Yes, thank you. The spirit of God is upon us. Thank you, Mara, choir, band. Let us um, start our vision and mission statement. Unity on the River is a center of celebration and transformation, inspiration, spirit-centeredness, oneness, and joy. Please hold these truths in your heart as we say together our mission and vision statements. Our mission, we are... Good morning and welcome to Unity on the River. I am Reverend Elaine Falvey and I will be facilitating for David Hulse. Because David would like to do a meditation before this talk, I'd like to introduce him now. It is my pleasure to tell you about our guest speaker, David Hulse. David calls upon his life work as a minister, teacher, author, and healer to empower and assist others through the use of vibration and sound therapy. Since the turn of the century, he has explored, developed, and created a unique approach to using tuning forks and intention, and we love it, <laughs> to experience the collective wholeness in all things. David's hope is that we can all find the harmonics of our own individual music. Today is breakthrough. Breaking through the walls of limited beliefs. Yeah. We would like to, let, to welcome anyone who is celebrating with us for the first time with a flower and a welcome packet. So do you please raise your hand if this is the first time you're here at Unity on the River? Yes. Please fill out the welcome card and take it to the welcome table in hospitality where a volunteer will answer your questions and anything you have about Unity on the River. We bless you and thank you for coming. Please know that we welcome all paths to God. You enrich our experience together. Please join us for fellowship after the service. Now we have some celebrations and invitations. From 12 to 1.15, right here in the sanctuary, uh, David will be having an angel wash workshop. This is an experiential workshop. Imagine having two angels, one on each side of you, whispering messages of love. Yeah, a method for breakthrough limiting beliefs. This is the experience of the angel wash. This week, Friday, June 19th, at 7.30 p.m., Meg Rain CD release concert. Woo! Go, Meg! Yeah! Our opening song is the name of Meg CD, I Am the One. <clears throat> Excuse me. In hospitality now, we have our youth art show, Unity on the River, The Art of Super Kids is the theme. I was singing, my voice is kind of going. Uh, the featured artist for the month and you can see that in the gallery wall and hospitality. So let's take a moment to greet each other in love with either a handshake or a hug. I invite you to say namaste. The divine in me sees the divine in you.
the dark to follow the light but love from my heart was trapped and tight when I remember home far from the earth I walk this land in a Set today. They are rocking. Judy, Cheryl, Wayne, and Will. It's not the size of the team, it's the quality in it. Good job. It is wonderful to be here this morning again. Uh, I talk about you a lot <laughs> in my travels. I always refer people back to unity on the river. So if you want to see a church that's got it together, that's alive, energetic, and in the process of great change and the transformation that we're going through today, you're the great model for that. So thank you for being that inspiration. I hope you're going to enjoy this morning. It's a, a little different, but I've got a lot of energy going on right now. I work with energy. So when you work with energy, you become energized. <laughs> and I try to work with energy that is breaking through. I do believe there's a new energy, an undiscovered energy. Dr. Valerie Hunt talks about from UCLA that said has been discovered. They don't know what to call it, but it is a new energy that is coming into the planet, because we need that energy to co-create a destiny. 
that is different than the road we're on today. Amen. We need a disruption to the disruption. Amen. Something has disrupted the course that Creator has set us up on. There's a scripture in Ephesians that says that we were found in Creator before the foundation of the world, found holy and blameless with all spiritual blessings. And that word foundation translates in the original language to disruption, before the disruption of the world. So I'm here to disrupt that disruption and change the course of nature. So today we're going to have a time of breakthrough. We're going to have a time in which we're going to break down some of these imaginary, illusionary walls that we have built up for ourselves that is keeping the inheritance from the children of the universe. The universe is always trying to give us the best, always. And sometimes the best does not always reach us. And of course, the ego's interpretation of that is always, what's wrong with me? What do I need to do? Am I meditating long enough? Am I praying long enough? What am I doing that I'm not getting the manifestation of the healing or the prosperity or whatever. And I'm here to show you that those are only imaginary walls that we can burn through by using energy and sound and vibration. And you certainly display that here. I'd like to begin with an experiment I read about actually many years ago that was uh, conducted in the sense of uh, flies actually, or little insects that had been flying around everywhere and they put these uh, insects into a container, a glass container, put a lid on it, and they watched them trying to do what they knew, and that was to be unlimited, to go where they wanted to go, but they kept bumping themselves on the sides and the top. And finally they became conditioned until they stopped going so far because they didn't want to hurt themselves. And then they had offspring who never even tried to get out of it. And finally, after some point, they came over and took the lid off the jar and they could have flown to their freedom, but they didn't because they had become so conditioned to the limitations that had been set before them, they thought they were real. And sometimes I think that's what's happened to us. We don't realize the lid has been taken off the jar. <laughs> I really want us to understand that even from a scriptural point of view, which, of course, you know my doctrine is that, so I'm going to use that as my story, as my allegory. But it does talk and tell us that we know that spirit knows no limitation. That that which we call God or source is an unlimited field of all possibility. And that we can tap into that at any time when we remove the barriers that are out of the way. Once we get past the body identity and get down to the I am of ourselves, our priorities begin to change and we will arise to what many of us call a Christ consciousness that knows no boundaries or walls. When you arise in consciousness to know that you have come out of God, you realize as God is, you are. I did a message at Unity of Charlotte where I minister and I was trying to tell them that actually, when you come and love me and hug me, you are being as God to me. Because God is love. And when you show that love, you are being God to me. And we need to be that to one another. And realize that we need that to be that to the world itself. In Ephesians 2.14, I'd like to read this. It says, For Christ is our peace, our bond of unity and harmony, and has made us both Jew and Gentile. Now he goes on finally and adds male and female, servant and master, one body, and has broken down, destroyed or abolished the hostile dividing wall between us. So if you read this story a little bit how it unfolds, you'll see that what Christ represents uh, as, as the man Jesus that in the time that he was here, and 2,000 years ago, it tells us that the, 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 the veil was rent from top to bottom. How many remember that little story, you that are from the Bible stories, that the, the veil was rent 
Up until then, people could not go into the most holy of places. Only the high priest and special people. But after that, whosoever will was the message. Everyone was equal. Didn't matter if you was Jew, Gentile, male, female, uh, if you were male, if you were gen whatever you were. You could just come and free. <laughs> I'm going to start naming names so I'll be up here all day. <laughs> Gay, straight, um, whatever. <laughs> could come in and, and have access to this wonderful presence that was called the Shekinah, presence of God in the, uh, in the Hebrew. The Shekinah presence, the great presence itself of the Shekinah. And when that was open to them, people could have taken advantage of it, but they did not because of the limitation of the religious dogmas and the religious beliefs and the laws that they bought into. So we need to realize that this has actually been done for us already. Therefore, everything that God has for you is already yours. It's already been given into your hands. And then people say to me, if that's true, then why have I not received this healing? Or why have I not received that beautiful partner that I'm looking for, or that job that, that, uh, that lights my fire with passion. Uh, it's not that nothing's being withheld from us. It's because we have built these limitation beliefs. And they come deep down from the very unconscious part of us many times. A lot of times we think, oh, I've got it together uh, as far as mentally. You know, I've been to classes, I've done affirmations, I've been to counseling. I really think I've got it together. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Most of what's really going on that's being attracted into our life is in the unconscious part of us. And that's what's going to happen in the workshop today is we're going to go into the unconscious and do brainwashing. <laughs> I happen to like the term brainwashing. I know a lot of brains that need to be washed. <laughs> and the scripture says we are washed by the word. So this is very powerful in the sense of how we're going to do this today, and I hope that you'll come and go through this deep cleansing of removing some of the unconscious and subconscious parts of you. I wanted to use the story this morning that's very famous to most everybody, even around the world, and that's the old story of the walls of Jericho. We've all heard about that story and how that the children of Israel spent 40 years have you ever looked on a map and seen how close Egypt and Israel is? It's not 40 years away. <laughs> it's more like 40 days away, but it says because of what was going on that needed to come out of the children of Israel, there had to be a longer process. And I'm here to tell you, I'm tired of the longer process. I want to go into the land that has been promised to me today. And that's what we're going to do in this message. And the reason that they roamed around for 40 years was because they were men of war. They were warring among themselves, fighting among themselves, bickering, complaining. Does that sound familiar to you today? <laughs> you know, when I think of what's going on between the Congress and, and, and the Senate and the President and this, that, and other, it's just constant bickering and fighting that is going on. Really, we are uh, our own worst enemies right now in this country. We're fighting one another when we need to be looking out to the world itself. So this is very important that they had to stay in the process until all of the war was out of them. Once they had, that had died out in them and there was no more men of war, then they became able to go into the land. You know, the battle of life exists only in the way you view your own understanding. The walls are built because of the way we have been conditioned to believe. The indwelling Christ is our peace and has broken down the middle wall of partition. Every wall, every limitation can crumble without war and fighting. The realm of appearances insists on knowledging uh, wars and walls of limitation. In the realm of reality, the place of Christ consciousness, you view the same things, this time through truth 
which causes a total reevaluation to be made or a shift in our perception. So the story goes like this. Now Jericho was fenced in by high walls, was tightly closed because of the Israelites. No one came in and no one came out. Now the way I heard the story is that the children of Israel, who are the good, innocent, chosen ones, came to the wall, uh, to Jericho, and uh, Jericho was uh, hostile to them, and the king was there and whatever, but that's not what it reads. It says the problem was with Israel themselves. It was not in them projecting upon Jericho. We have to stop blaming and projecting everybody else for our limitations and take responsibility to realize that we have entered into the creative process of creating our own experience into the world. And it just says that. It says, I have given you the city. I have given you the king of valor. It's already in your hands, but you want to fight. There's no reason to fight. All you have to do, Joshua, is see, I have given you Jericho. You have to see. You have to be able to change your view, how you see it. And if you change the way you see it, that's the way you're going to experience it. We all know that. So he says, here's what you need to do. You haven't quite got it yet. You just don't have it yet. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to march around the wall. All you men of war, once the city... And then you're going to do this for six days. And then on the seventh day, trumpets and ram horns and, 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 and all this shouting and all this sound is going to go forth on the seventh day. You remember, and, uh, some of us here are old enough to remember the famous Memorex uh, commercial with Ella Fitzgerald. She hit a certain note and the glass broke. And shattered, ah, yeah. That's pretty powerful, isn't it, to realize. And what had happened is that the sound of the voice reached the level of the frequency of the glass and then went one step a little higher and the glass could not hold the stand uh, of the sound any longer and then the glass shattered. That is amazing. And that's what's going on here. If you will build this up and get the war out of you and march around the wall and come to that place and then give that shout, then that vibration will bring down the wall you think is there, for it does not exist. So, when they make a long blast with a ram's horn, and you hear the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shout with great shout, the wall of the enclosure shall fall down in its place, and the people shall go up over it, and every man straight before him. What a simple story, but it's profound to me to think that we can use intention, sound, through vibration to shatter the illusions of our life. This is what we're here to do. When I started first doing tuning forks and going into a client, I always meant to say, what can I help you with? What can I do for you for an hour? But it would always come out, what can I undo for you for an hour? And I thought, that's not right. No, no, no. And then the next one to come in, I'd say, well, what can I undo for you? And I got it. I got it that it's already been done. All we need to do is just undo the beliefs that are limited. That we need to remove the blockages and the walls that we have built up with the limitations of our own beliefs. So today, we're going to do something. Are you ready to have a breakthrough? Are you ready to shatter your own walls that you've built up? I know that there are those among you right now that is working to manifest in your life. How many can say, I want to manifest a healing, I want to manifest prosperity, and I know I'm close, I feel it coming, but it's just not quite getting down to me. Well, we're going to take care of that today, and we're going to do that. I'm actually going to do something a little different today, but someone gave me a CD not too long ago, and so I put it in my car and played it, and I, I almost had to stop the car. It was so powerful 
that I thought I should not be playing this in this car because I wanted to get up and move. I wanted to dance. I wanted to do something because it was so powerful, it was strong, and it had to do with the walls of Jericho. So I picked, up, picked out about three minutes of that so that we can experience this because I don't think it could be done any better than it is done on this CD. So why don't you stand with me? And I want you to get in the groove and get in the move. And we're going to march around these walls seven times. And then we're going to, we're going to give a shout. Musicians can do whatever, join in. Singers can sing in any we'll just join in the best we can with this and then we're going to get rid of these different Bondages that we have built up in our life and we're going to leave here free to begin to receive For it is our father and our mother's good pleasure to give us the things of the kingdom this morning. We are Their children today. We are deserving of receiving what it is that you have an intention to receive today so all right, let's go here and let's get with it and let's find let's find the rhythm. All right. Good. Shake the ground, the children of God march around the ground. Told them all seven times around the city. With a mighty song, the end of the war. Came a tumbling down. The end of the war. Came a tumbling down. The end of the war. down receive I didn't do the meditation did I I knew when they put me there it ain't gonna work when I stand up 
I'm going to go. How many felt that? Your walls are down. Claim it. Claim it as you leave here today that my walls that I have made of based out of limited beliefs has now come down and I am ready to receive my inheritance from the kingdom of heaven. Thank you so much. I hope that you will stay for the workshop and be with us in the angel wash. Namaste. God bless you. I'll do a meditation. Oh, I'm going to do a meditation now. I'd love to. I like the way spirit works myself. I really do. It's much more fun. All right, get centered into your seat. And let's, let's do a meditation based on the gratitude of what has just taken place here. We've had a breakthrough. You've had a breakthrough as a community. You've had a breakthrough individually. We have had a breakthrough today. We're going to leave here in a different place than we came in. So let's center ourselves. Go to our heart space. And feel the gratitude that we have received. With gratitude in our heart, we enter into a state of joy and peace that passes all understanding. Holy Spirit, we ask that this not be left here today, but we take it with us into our homes, into our jobs, into our families, into our communities, into this state, into this nation. And we call in the divine holy angels to take it into the collective unconscious of the planet itself. That the walls of others will begin to come down because of what we have experienced here this morning. That those with guns in their hands will set them down and learn war no more. And beat those guns into shout plows to break up the fallow ground of new seeding in the world today. We ask for thy blessings, O Elion of the Most High, of the Melchizedek Order of an Endless Life, to be upon this place, upon this team, be on the minister in his time of the experience he's going through and his wife. We thank you today that you have been with us so powerfully in your presence. And I'm going to leave you in the silence for just a few seconds. As we softly emerge out of the silence, back to our heart space. We just feel that wonderful gratitude. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So it is. Open your eyes. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Seth Warzak. I'm the director of Sacred Service here at Unity on the River. Um, 
before I get to some more announcements, I do just want to mention that in the summer months, it's often that we need a little bit extra help. We have so many volunteers here at the church. We have uh, about 95 sacred service positions. Now, some people occupy five or six of those, but there are many opportunities. In, if you are new here, if you'd like to kind of get to know some people, there's really no better way to do that than to serve. And all I'm looking for is just one Sunday a month. And there are many teams, whether welcoming, hospitality, we have technical teams as well. Uh, but come see me after service and hospitality if you're interested or if you have any questions. But we do have a few more announcements. Um, next Sunday, June 21st, there'll be a grads and dads celebration. Now, children may wear superhero costumes, and this will be back by the river. It's quite beautiful back there. Um, moving on, uh, we have Metaphysics 3 with Reverend Ogan Holder. The dates are here. Now, today is the last day to get the early bird special, which is only $95. After today, it will increase to $120. You may sign up in hospitality on a clipboard, on the bulletin board, and you may pay at the bookstore. And then, yes, I'm very happy to announce that Shiva Lila will be back to perform a kirtan a week from this Wednesday, June 24th. Thank you to everyone who helped make this a great event last time. We had about 75 people, most of which had never been here before. So this is a great opportunity to invite people from outside of the church to come meet us and come see what we're about and maybe tell them a little bit about our Wednesday evening Samadhi service. I am looking for volunteers to make this event successful. If you are interested, please come see me after service. I have some posters to pass out. We are building a fledgling promotional team. I also have some posters for Meg Rain, so let's promote her as well. So if you are interested, come see me. You don't need to do a lot. Just Even if it's just five posters to bring to your local cafe, to your yoga studio, um, to a library, let's do this. Many hands make light work, and let's promote our people. And then lastly, um, next Sunday, Ogan will be back, and there will be a community meeting after service. Um, feel free to come with some questions. You can check in on the state of the church, and Ogan will also give an update on Jennifer and his family. So please attend. Thank you very much. you. <laughs> okay, we're going to bless uh, tithes and offerings now. Where are we? Divine Spirit, thank you for being our true provider send these tithes and offerings out to do the will and the work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> kind of did that a little, a little gun shy on that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Oops. <laughs> Chaplains. Chaplains, where are we? You guys mess me up in the order. Oh, I did it backwards, didn't I? <laughs> okay. Chaplains are available for prayer after service. Chaplains, would you like to stand and be recognized? Whatever you have in your heart that you would like to have held in prayer, be sure to see one of these beautiful souls after the service. Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> so let's hold our tithes and offerings in our hands. We already did that, right? Okay. You messed me up with the prayer thing. See, I had an order. And now I'm like all messed up. Okay. So I guess it's time for thank yous. Is that where we are? Where are we? Oh, I'm sitting. I'm sorry. I'm just getting totally carried away.
divine spirit. Thank you for being our true provider. We send these tithes and offerings out to do the will and the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'd like to thank the streamers for paying, to, for watching us and joining <laughs> us. Hey, streamers. We totally forgot about you. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so mixed up right now, but it's all good. <laughs> good job, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Brian. The Lady Fountain. <laughs> Let me tell you a quick story, okay? Because you know me, I can never just play a song, right? So when I first, I, I, I played since I was 10 years old, I played guitar and sang, and I went to music school, and I actually wrote a song about this. Coming out of music school messed me up, because they tried to, you know, contain me within this box, and, and I got out of music school, and I, and I, but I had this voice, you know, I wrote some songs, and I wanted to sing. And I would, I would go to the folk clubs for the open mics and sweat. Have you ever seen broadcast news? It was like just sweat would pour down my face. And I'd, my voice would shake. And uh, this, uh, one time I was opening up for a, for a well-known folk performer. And I, and I sang my you know, half hour worth. And this woman came up to me, this tiny little older lady. And she goes, your songs are beautiful. She goes, but uh, she goes, you just need to relax. She goes, relax. <laughs> And I went, wow, that's really the key, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so you've all seen me. Like, it's pretty rare that I come up here and I'm like, ah. you know, performing with my son. That was probably the most nervous I've been in a long time. But just, just, just oh, take that awesome. deep breath and let it go. And, and we're all good, right? So that's, that's what we can do it now. We'll do it collectively right now. Thanks. <sighs> Thanks. Now I can tell my therapist that I actually took a deep breath during the week. <laughs> Dozer, everybody. He brings us so much. I love you, Brian. He's so awesome. Okay, here we go. This is uh, just one other thing. This should be, uh, it's open the eyes to my heart, but in honor of David, this really should be open the ears to my heart. We don't have a good ear song, but this is, uh, <laughs> think ears and it'll be all good. Open the eyes to my heart, Lord. Open the eyes to my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes to my heart, Lord. Open the eyes to my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Glory, oh 
want to see you holy 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 i want to see you holy 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 David and, and Goliath story, kind of the same, and all the correlation. We had a great day, yeah. Yeah. and there was a gecko. <laughs> <laughs> we cuddled, big kids got to cuddle the gecko today. All right. It was good. Yes. We had a great day, and Miss Ella and Miss Becca and Miss Solace are going to pray with you. Who's yeah. praying? Yeah. Yeah, that was okay. You want to go up there? Oh, join us in singing the peace song. Yeah. <laughs>
light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well, and we are richly blessed.